curtailed at the end of an 0-3 week, but now they've had a week to reset, and we'll see what they can do. But because of that first result, again, it does not have to be instantly come back to defeat the LCK champions. To me, honestly, it's about understanding how long you beat them last time out, responding to that into the draft, not showing any, any signs of the Fnatic that we saw on the final match yep. day, making the adaptations around the draft, to me, is the big start for Fnatic. Let's see what they can do right now. They're doing the prime standard. You ban away Callisto first round red side, as everyone so wants to do. Uh, 26 out of 26 red hey. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's only been one time the Good has not been first banned. Why is no one talking about the Callista meta? Yeah, well, because she's not meta, getting Callista played meta. <laughs> Every I mean, game, red side. Yeah, it's like people realize that uh, laning dominant bot laners tend to win lane against Kogba. I'm getting off the of it here. But yeah, Janna off the table as well. Fnatic hoping they can get Rakan for Jess as he loves to play the playmakers. I'm sure he'd want that for himself. One final ban per side now. See what slips through because there are some power picks still available. Jungle Pool was very targeted in our first game. Longtree's final ban, actually, interestingly, a NAR ban as the final ban. Yeah, you always wonder in situations like this when Fnatic is red side, who will they actually give their counter pick to during most of the regular season? They could wow. do it for Caps in the mid lane, but. Not here. This is almost forcing them into a Lulu first pick with those two support bands. I am surprised to see Rakan banned away. I know Jessus loves the champ, but their strategy is to force the Lulu first pick and get a counter pick somewhere else. We'll see what they get out of this red red side first phase, because this should be what makes the draft. And I don't think you have to be terrified about Longju locking in Lulu. Sure, it is Lulu without the cleanest of answers in terms of Worlds 2017 support pool. But Gorilla has always looked best on proactive supports in spring season when it was a different meta, when it was Zyra Lulu. Honestly, Gorilla had a very down split. So sure, it's a power pick, but it's not necessarily a Longju power pick. Yeah, and some of these power picks have been slightly less effective than others. And what's going over to Longju here, specifically if they lock in the Sejuani, were two of the highest priority going into the tournament, but have fallen slightly. A lot of teams are prioritizing Gragas over Sejuani and Janna over Lulu. So it's actually pretty rare that you see these three picks actually on the same team in the Lulu, the Sejuani, and the Kog'Maw. And some of it is Broxa playing his own style. His picks so far this tournament have been Elise, Lee Sin. Okay, one Sejuani game, but now the Rek side. He's only played one Cinderhold champion so far the entire tournament, or at least in the group stage, I should say, in the main phase here. So he's playing to his style. They're going to get the Cinder the mid lane. More early pressure. But I'm getting a bit giddy because, you know, when you think of League catch-all turns, Juggermore became one of them. It was actually Prey and Gorilla that developed Juggermore on the Rocks Tigers now many years ago. So seeing Lulu Cop, always the core tenant of that particular combination, mm -hmm. makes you smile. It may not have been 2017 success on the Lulu, but anytime you give resources to Prey, this guy's got. And I wonder if this is the moment where we see another team try and speed up the game. Longju was speed running worlds, yep. but they have been doing it against other teams that are playing slowly. And here, they have what you would look at as a slow composition. But you have Rek'Sai on one side, you have Syndra on one side. They can pick an aggressive support and even counter pick the top lane and really try and go for an early game strategy. And I was actually talking to some of you analysts about how did they, how would they approach Red Side? And they were honestly saying more of the counter pick for Cap story rather than necessarily pick, picking for Soaz. But Soaz often finds himself in those tricky matchups giving him the counter pick to at least pick a safe tank matchup Ooh, with Vegas. Sona, oh, Sona! Sona gonna come through, super good laner for sure. She is so gankable. Oh, yes. But the landing phase is great. Incredibly gankable, can do a bunch of damage in lane and can also be very good late game. And we were talking <laughs> about That's more like who else we would see for Arden Sensor if too many supports started seeing Vance. Sona was in that conversation. And will we see Khan's Jace? I think it's likely it's the sort of pick that basically wins every tank matchup. It will be yeah. locked in. This guy solo brought up the world top lane uh, Jace win rate by a massive amount. He went on a huge tear, 10 and 1, 11 and 1. This guy is excellent at Jace. And now suddenly the counter pick, finding a pick that's in Soaz's wheelhouse that does well against Jace, that's sure. pretty tricky. Well, he's going to go for the Renekton on the, this one. He is French after all. Renekton is basically their home champion in this case. That or Fiora, if you know the reference, of course. But that's interesting. A blind Jace is still a bit interesting. It is uh, you know, a lot of confidence out of Khan. The easy choice is to just pick a big dumb tank. I mean, heck, toppling Gragas and just wait for right. whatever the counter pick is. 
He's going bold, so is Soaz. A lot of it becomes down to the 2v2 in those situations. When you have a Jace, you can pressure the lane so hard, and if Cuz is there, sometimes the 2v2 becomes unwinnable for the opposition side. So Soaz and Broxa have to be very creative if they want to shut down Khan. But they have to know what the plan is from Longju. This is basically the core tenets of their game plan, a comp that plays very well around top side. First sign the Jace took till second week, but I think the preparation around it should be basically copy-paste from their excellent LCK sum. Absolutely agree. So we're getting ourselves into the second game of the day. We'll see more from both these teams further on. Longju, their goal is to speed run through Worlds, be the fastest team to 6-0 their group stage of Worlds history. They're on pace for that so far, if they can keep the results going. Fnatic hoping to stay alive on this one. Yeah, they have the Kog'Maw Lulu. They also have the Jace, so signature picks across the top and the bottom of the map. They took power, whereas Fnatic seemed to be a little bit more specific about what they were looking for from the job. They've left a lot open. Power to a Korean team is a, a scary proposition. Now we've seen Reckless's Twitch, though, be so incredible as well. Nearly won that game against the Mortals. We'll see what happens here on this one as we get ourselves onto the Rift. Welcome back to Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen. Game two of the day between South Korea's Longju Gaming and the European LCS's Fnatic. It's a battle for spots in the quarterfinals. That is the point of the group stage here, making it into the top eight. Neither of these teams have yet secured their bastions, despite having opposite records so far at 3-0 and 0-3. See what comes into this one. Exactly. Polar opposites during week one. The fastest game we have seen of Worlds 2017 was the last time Longju and Fnatic played against each other. 20 minutes, 52 seconds. The third fastest game in Worlds history. And you have to think for these five players of Fnatic, it's etched in their mind, burned in their mind, even with the dancing rift Herald and not even 21 minutes on the clock, but this has kind of become the storyline of world. Longju do worlds quick. Longju right now started at 30 minutes, you know, 30 minutes for the first game, but it's getting shorter, Jatton. I don't know how much shorter it can get. That's a worrying thing to think about. Yeah, not much. And you've also had a week to reset. So here you have to see whether the fanatic implosion that it seemed like we were witnessing on Twitter had a huge lasting effect or whether they've been able to refocus their strategy. When I look at the draft, it does feel refocused to me. They have a lot of CC, they have lanes they can play around, and they even have a late game strategy with Sona healing up the Jace poke, but they have to be able to execute in the year of the game and hold on. And that's why I'm excited to get more data on what does some of these other supports look like in bot lane that can use Ardent Sensor. Sona and Soraka, for example, are ones that we were thinking about. Sona very, very strong in lane, harassing, but the gank ability, that's gonna be a problem. Speaking of strong in lane, Caps took two of the small raptors from the initial leash. He will get level two on the first wave and be able to fight BDD. Yeah, two small raptors is the max amount you can give over as a jungler while still hitting level four off a of five camp clear. So you don't necessarily hit the level two immediately, uh, but you still can get there. My eyes are on Kuz a lot in this early game because traditionally play around the Jace, play around the top side. Where he goes first will be very interesting. You want to be there to take down Jez, who will get very low. He'll be trying to harass, will be likely to overextend, but also snowballing tops, whether it's a fast gank top into a bot lane focus, or whether he's going to shift between those two lanes. There's a lot of options for Kuz, and we usually don't have the microscope on his individual decision making, because there's a lot of strong voices on Longju. And listen, the Brox's jungle path is not pathing towards topside, but the Kuz is. It was a very standard red to blue to Grom Sejuani gank, but the Warder spotted them out, they at least see him coming mid. Caps is looking for counter gank. He's stunned to BDD, the flash knock him is there, do they have the damage up, but he's down, summoners already! One more shot, I'll do him in, and first blood comes through to Broxa. Trade kill, of course, coming across now, and Caps has to run away from Cuz. Red buff is on, he though. He can kill him. Yeah, he's got cleanse, but no flash, so we can get away from the stun. He's gonna have to burn that here, gets away. Make sure he cleanses before the explosion happens. Also, BDD's first death of Worlds. There is a question of would he die in group stage. Fnatic yes. ganks him early. And that means only Ming is deathless. We'll be playing later in the week, but only a few minutes. The first game of week two. BDD falls down for the first time. They both sides were baiting, but there was an information advantage to Fnatic. When you watch the replay, it's actually off your screen, but in the minimap you can see that Sejuani is seen pathing into mid lane, and that's why a huge advantage to Fnatic. Yeah, and potentially over eager from the side of Broxit. Doesn't even tunnel in before the flash, so then 
uh, he didn't have any flash when Cuz did arrive. Since he did have the vision advantage, they never really waited for a counter gank. They just went for the quick gank on a BDD. It did get them first blood, but it did trade a kill back. So this looks like now as we're seeing Khan play aggressively, push Soas around on the map. He's got a three farm lead right now. Not a ton of turret damage, but he will at least deny some of the gold here from this Renekton. Check in more as time goes on. You're seeing, yeah, the gold only 90 apart. That'll that'll grow in the future. And a lot of, up 200 gold. And a lot of people see the top side matchup and remember, say, Huni getting slammed by Khan in the finals of the LCK. Remember that was with vertical jungling and a lot of support around top side to allow the denial. Khan doesn't have vision of the enemy red side jungle. It is a rec side, can be a reliable ganker. So for now, Khan can't play quite as aggressively, deny as many CS he might want to, because the vision is not in place for him to repeat that game plan. Not easy, but Cuz gonna go back to the side of the map. Broxa with the control ward, hoping to take over the river as well. Cuz does the exact same thing and says, I see some vision over here. And Broxa gonna juke away, but control ward, control goes to Cuz and the rest of Longju here. So as again, shoved out of the lane and with them kind of having that spat in the jungle, he knows he's safe to do so. And this is what Khan does to people on Jace. He completely bullies them in and forces you to respond. And Broxa has not been able to help Soaz. And at this point, it's too late. There's a huge mini wave for the turret, and any type of all-in would be matched by Kuz in a 2v2. This is what Longju does. So Zwani can take the turret, but Khan has no mana. He's got to respect what this could be. Broxa waiting in the wings. He knows they're both under the turret. Soaz feels safe. And with this amount of rage, he can heal up under the turret, no problem. Look at some of the farm. Stays alive. And it's not a dead Soaz, but now he's... Tr Finally getting access to CS and sharing experience with his jungler. It's a short. It's not a kill, but still plenty oh, of Oh, damage on a reckless. He's got to be a bit careful. The health bar is running low on this. The chase is on. Out of mana, out of range, but that was a decent trade, and it's going to be the first recall out of Fnatic. If you have some money, they'll be able to afford decent items. Yeah, that lane is splitting so far from a farm perspective, but Fnatic forced into a recall here, so a little bit of that pressure will seed over to Longju. That means for him, 1400 gold recall it was for Reckless and Co. So he's going to have Zeal his first item. It's pretty standard to rush Hurricane at the very beginning. It does mean he floats some gold on the recall though. It does feel like the early phase of the game is going to be a lot of this jungler face-offs on the top side. So at least Brox is playing at least lip service to providing coverage for the top side. Having vision on the enemy jungler is like having a ward around whichever camp he is on because you know he's there. To me, I'm always interested to see when the transition comes to the first gank on bot side because vision priority isn't part of the metagame. Sightstone timings are much later. Actually getting cemented vision on the bot side is difficult. And we already said you could choose if you were Kaz, top side or bot side focus. Expect Sona to be very much overextending and it's a potential kill for whichever side visits bot lane first. And I look at Prey, that is an incredibly early upgrade on Relic Shield. Yep. So he has faster sharing on the Targon's Brace, and when he completes the support quest, which will be another 300 gold, he will be getting that shield from the item. So, yep. very defensive play there by Longview's Bob. So, I'm going to go for Moosebeam. He did he wanted to dodge away from the stuns. He's got uh, Cuz around him nearly as well, and that's still a summoning heal down for Broxa, looking for the gank. Right now, this Rek'Sai is down a level 6v5. Cuz has ulti access, but Cactus cleanse up. There's no target there. A bit more flexibility with build path when you are on rise and you're not looking for a Rod of Ages timing. If you see a Negatron cloak, probably going to be going away from the Rod of Ages as a first purchase. So mm -hmm. at least has the ability to deal with some of the Olins from Caps. Yeah, he's doing the Abyssal Mask Rush. Yep. And what I find interesting is, is Pobalter had gone for Rod of Ages in the same matchup. Now the ult's going to come across. They're going to land on Asona. So he's going to land a little bit of damage in the Reckless, but he's going to try to get away with the camouflage. The slow is still landing. He's trying to wait on the flash. He finally does so at the very end. Pray one more auto won't be enough to kill. Out they go, but a solid trade. And Gank means some damage. Yeah, based on the power of those slows, I would have expected Reckless to flash much earlier, but he thought he'd be able to hold on to it. Ends up costing him both. It was interesting to see the choice there from Kuz. Both uh, members of the bot lane, Reckless and Jez, were possible targets. He kind of split mm -hmm. his damage, but he hit the CC. Getting both summoners out of Reckless is a very high value, because now, if you're Sona, you're probably going to have to play under turret, not be able to overextend to harass trade like Sona wants to, because your AD carry doesn't have summoners. You see the two coming in. They want to fight Kuzu. They've got the shield at the very beginning. Now they're going to knock that I one down. Their first damage could be there. Trying to think away and going to stay alive. And here comes Khan. He wants the kill, but I'm not going to come through for Broxa. Ulti divide some time. He's still brought the wrong side. Yeah, a flash makes through. He has no way out. Now, so has flashes, but they're already out of range. Khan gets away with it. 
plus one kill to launch you. Yeah, caught well ahead of that play on the roam, even though Broxer was in fog. Oh, he just has had his flash, but not for long. A straight up two on two kill. Of course, the gank burned the summoners, but now the repeat fight is there. That was actually a big mistake from Fnatic Spotlight. They didn't respect the level six being hit by Gorilla. It meant the prey could go wild running in because they would have had the health advantage. So 2v2. Unfortunately, that kind of piles on to what is suddenly a bit of a long shoe advantage. Yeah, if you're wondering about mentality and tilt as well, those are the killers in these games where you're using your flashes and still falling down. This is a play Fnatic was trying to set up. They have the tremor sense for Cousin BDD, but they don't track the Jace until it's too late. The fight has already started. Not to mention it's incredibly difficult to burst a Sejuani thanks to the pass. And you mentioned the flash. It was smart because at this point, Longju knows so as is coming. The follow is going to path through from the Void Assault, from the, uh, sorry, from the Rek'Sai Ultimate. They know he'll be there. We move to bottom lane, and unfortunately, Jazz has walked up too far. And I think it was also a smart move by Longju right there, hiding in the brush, knowing they're both level six, and actually freezing the wave down on the bottom side. So if Jez's and Reckless want to hit six, they're either completely giving up farm or just losing some of the experience when yep. they move up to try and get it, instantly punished by Prey and Gorilla. And the no assist credit goes to Kuz. He does kind of get that advantage for his team again. The summoners being down, a really big deal. <laughs> First item's already done. Gorilla, sub 10 minute art sensor, and he's got a long range marksman to kind of apply that damage with. This is a very strong 2 on 2 right now for Long. And the power spike when it comes to trading is going to be hellish for Reckless and Jez to deal with. The synergy between the on hit multiplication of the Ginsu Rage Blade and the Ardent Sensor is one of the hidden big things why on hit Varus has become more of a thing. Unfortunately for Reckless, he's just going to kind of build a hurricane and try to disengage, push the wave and lead. Yeah. Because any sort of standing damage trades are going to be super on the side of Longshu. And when one lane hits that power spike first, the lane is mostly over. Add that to the fact that there are no flashes on the Fnatic bottom side, and Broxa isn't over there on that side of the jungle. The turret's not even contestable. Fnatic had to move off. And it's one of those multi-step plans. Of course you can invade the blue buff. They can't enter lane against us with how strong we are. They have to take a very defensive path to lane, and Reckless and Jezus say, well, we need to get out of this 2v2 as fast as possible. They'll be able to hit the map first, but big advantage being piled up around bot side for long shot. And the question is, how quickly and effectively can Fnatic answer this? The play when you're getting invaded in the bottom side is to just go over to the top side. Full turret gold going over to Prey. 650 to him. That's going to feel pretty good on this. We'll see what comes next. Is this turret going to take a fair bit of damage? Nice little knockback there. And now this turret could go down with one more wave of this kind of pressure. But keep in mind, Lulu and Sejuani both joining the fray. And so, and uh, Khan's highlight reel has only grown at outplays with Jace under turrets when multiple members head up top. His first thought was to pull back. He now has the support of his laners. They're not even going to get that standing gold and getting that top lane out of turret. He's going to stay alive for now. It's going to be the wave caught by the bot lane, the duo of Fnatic down in that lane over there by tier two. Recall comes through for Frey. Not quite enough for the rage play, but he's close to that completion soon. No Drake's picked up yet, but a two and a half thousand gold lead in Longju in heavy control right now. And now it's all on Fnatic resetting. They realize now they're behind. The game is not over by any means, but this is the part where we can really query where did Fnatic go? The first game on stage after last week, they've fallen behind. They're starting to feel, of course, at least a modicum of reality and negativity about where they are. This is really where their character can be accurately judged. And I think any gank is acceptable in the fact that all five flashes for Longju are on cooldown, and there's even still a flash for Cap. So they can go for a play, but they have to commit for it. And the problem is their lanes are not actually in great spots right now. So if Brox is thinking about pathing bottom lane, they're going to lose the turret top. Damage already coming through on this one. Two different attack speed buffs available for Lulu, thanks to Arthur Sensor. Trade I, for Botley. I do like Fnatic's plan, which right now is to send the duo lane around and basically play around Jinx. When you have someone who on their own will crush lane in a 1v1, don't make it a 1v1. 1v2, 1v3. The price you pay is there are more objectives on the top side that are being focused. The Rift Herald has already been started. There still is a Mountain Drake, but yeah. for now, Fnatic are very much second when it comes to actually picking up those big map objectives. Right. Theoretically, it's tradable, but right now, Right now it's not happening. Yeah, and Prey, thanks to turret gold and the one assist, is 1100 gold ahead of Reckless. They gave him solo turret on first turret. They gave him solo turret top, compared to Fnatic, who just got one turret, and it was shared between the Sona and the Twitch. Play now, Khan does have his summoners, though. No real threat on the Jace here, but the bot lane turret still being focused a little bit 
a couple hundred health off. A gold lead with Rage Blade, 350 minutes, means that you have that item early. You don't have that annoying time when you're sitting on a Blasting Wonders and AD Carry and yeah. hoping to get the, the actual combination. So that's why Longju were giving the solo gold, because they wanted the Rage Blade to actually be completed. And now Rage Blade on sensor, that's pain. That's a lot of pain. And he's going towards the next item as well. You expect to be Hurricane, but Double Dagger could be a lot of different options here for Prey. See what it is. Reckless, of course, on the hunt. Champion he's done so well with before. He's been uh, one of the biggest split pushes for Fnatic. Before it was Kennen. The Twitch, I think, works really, really well in that style as well. With a Hurricane early, his wave clears rate. Like, this is a spot where Reckless definitely can take over if he can get some gold and some items from his inventory. It's going to be quite a bit for Fnatic if they want to win this thing. Yeah, he'd have to get an incredibly good open to a fight, and there's already a decent amount of Bruiser-style tankiness that Longshu has been able to pick up right here. Ninja Tabi and a couple of people. The Abyssal Mask Rise for a little bit of extra durability, both magic resist, but also health. We mentioned that on the bot side of the map was an objective Fnatic could take slower. Unfortunately, for lane tempo, they didn't feel they could stay long enough to actually take the Mountain Drake. It adds to Longshu's advantage. The Rift Herald very aggressively summoned in mid lane. We can't see the turret HP, but I imagine starting at least. Actually, it was actually the really the only first burst of damage. I mean, typically, Caps is going to have lane priority in this one. Cinder versus Rai is going to have the push. Ooh, Reckless wants to go in on a BDD. He's got Sona behind him. Speaking of Sona, I want to point out she's bought a tier right now, Jess. This is actually a very common build if you're watching, like, Challenger, Sona's yeah. solo queue. The mana pool really nice to spam those spells. Exactly. Especially when you're dealing with poke, it makes you even more squishy. It's a very high-risk strategy to use. You don't think it would transfer over to competitive. But I do actually think if you were going to play Sona, it is objectively the right build because you need the mana. I absolutely agree on this one. We'll see what comes through. And Soaz is stuck in a bit of a 1v2, the Citra. Oh, sorry, Sejuani over the wall. I think it's also a reality that boots can be delayed pretty significantly on Sona. Her big play yeah. is, of course, the Flash, right, for Flash Ult. But otherwise, she's so far in the back line, she's not poking for priority targets with the Q lock-on in a team fight. She's defensive. She doesn't get punished not having boots like other supports. You actually just don't build boots on a lot of Sona builds because by the time you get into the late game, your E is making you fast enough that you're basically movement speed parity with the rest of your team. This is the Juggernaut work, by the way. Double buffs onto the Kog'Maw, the W and the E from uh, Lulu, and he gets walk-in and frontline and do everything by himself, and you're seeing the, the glimpses of that right here. Prey can frontline on the Kog'Maw as long as he's watching for the CC, as long as he can get away from Syndra, get away from Sona. Right now, no cleanses, Chain Stun can kill him. And I'd like to call you, Jat, and be like, okay, but what about flash cooldown reduction for the Sona? But the reality is that with how much gold income you get as a support now in this meta we've been able to track and supports get about 20 percent more gold you need to fill up those items with other things as well cuts gonna try and disengage i guess trying to save the chirp by himself minions but this should still fall get more auto attacks and oh, coming across a two-man hit to be a disengage the number of autos took a little bit too long to fanatic burn their first crescendo to get away safely and knock down mid turret yeah and we'll get back to support items in a moment but that was just a very proactive play by fanatic yep. grouping with the ardent sensor sona very strong play to make, a lot of sustained healing thanks to the tier, push down that turret very quickly. And it's a good read of what's happening in the game because of course Ryze and Jace are both oh going to side lane this look at that. And if Sona had not delivered a ton of heals in the summoner heal at the very end as well, that would have been dead cast or a flash down. So Jace and Ryze spent most of them, spend most of this mid game in side lane, so grouping mid lane was a proactive strategy they could make. Very good to see on the side of Fnatic because again, we just don't want them to roll over. That game plan is only th three minutes and 50 seconds. The game time, the last time these two teams met just a few days ago, it seems like this one's going to go oh, long. Oh, no. This is going to be definitely more than a three-minute game here on this one. Prey and the rest of the company going to look to do what they can. I do want to point out something else that I actually really love. Storm Raider Surgery is the best keystone on Kog'Ma, provided you can survive your landing phase. And it means that when you get, like, four auto attacks, you gain the giant burst of movement speed. And, and that is the only, you know, kiting tools that Kog'Ma has, is just his basic movement abilities and being able to walk really, really quickly. Huge deal for him. Definitely get the maximum value out of your limited bio pain. Barrage, yep. your W duration there, so Absolutely. I do like it as a choice. But yeah, the simple fact is, if you get 20% more gold as supports, and your items start to pile up, you do hit six items much earlier, and honestly, you want five in a control ward slot. Yeah. So if you don't have space for boots, more actives might be more important for Sona, given how she plays. Oh, that's a flash force. I think that's actually correct. It would have yeah. probably been a death to Cuz right there. More space in your inventory as well. I think Sona is one of the best scaling supports with gold as well. Sure. That's why occasionally you would see mid Sona or top Sona actually be relatively effective. But there's no flash on Sona. 
Wangji wants to enter that mid lane turret because they're actually being out turreted by Fnatic right now, even after that start of feeding all the turrets to Prey. And the early game has definitely slowed down quite a bit, of course, not a lot of kills in the last few minutes. So as still within 10 CS or so of Khan. Not that Renekton has a godly late game, but it's certainly a pretty decent move right here. Nice stun gonna land. They're gonna look for the follow through on a Cuz. Will be coming across. Almost going down. Somebody heal comes through for BDD to keep him alive. And out of the back line, so is here. Look it. for the knock. Look for the stuns. He's gonna try to cut away because the damage out right. in. And Frey gonna knock him down. And here comes the next one. Jess is likely to fall as well. BDD grabbing himself another one. His first kill of the game. Five to one now for Longju. Longju able to answer that spell of fanatic aggression by having just enough tankiness on all their members right there. We talked about how they have that bruiser level tankiness and then Fnatic just overdoped. They were trying to make two plays at once rather than just focusing on Cuz. And we need to see the replay to know exactly how much information they had about where Prey was on the map. He was in position. If it was a 5v3, certainly you could follow through. But by the time we saw Prey on our screens, Fnatic had gone too far. They felt who hopped up after some nice decision making and some nice objective trading in the previous moments. The mid lane still stays, st still stays short. So for now, the next step of the plan for Longju, actually pushing this advantage, is being relatively at least stalled out by Fnatic. We'll see though, late game scaling, it's hard to say who really has the better of it. All right, now we're gonna watch that fight again from the mid lane. Yeah, so Prey and Gorilla are in the mid lane as they all try and burst, cause everything burned heal as well as Luluwalt, and then knowing Luluwalt is down, so as in Roxa, just see it, you want to focus the support because they're so pivotal to kill this meta. He'd already burned all his heals though, and it left Prey untouched to just unleash, stack up his rage, and get the kill. So I actually don't like the idea if you're going to run Barrier of focusing support, because you... Actually, no, I take that back, you're actually right. Uh, barrier is of course very easy to keep uh, Marksman alive, so I rescind my comment. Gorilla, the more easily killed of the two, would still doesn't come through. Yeah, in that moment, I can see why it's happening. I think a lot of other teams have found success killing supports first in fights, but it just wasn't to be that good that time. Go, another Kishana gonna land, but it doesn't really matter, because once again, just like the last time, Blast goes over the wall. Nice steal from Khan, gets a rep up for himself. Walks away swaggily, looks like a gentleman in this one. The game hasn't been all about Khan, but there's still time. His late game, Jace, has been powerful. It's not just been about his 1v1s, but so as finding free time, He'd be a competitive 20 CS down against a Jace, nothing to really hold your nose up against. Yeah, I think Soaz has done very well yeah. in the laning phase against Khan, considering the situation he was put in. But also, in this particular team composition, who is going to be the armor stacker that makes Jace, quote, fall off? Fair. Because if he has the Black Cleaver and all of these armor penetration items coming in with Serrated Dirk, it's really gonna hurt. That's gonna be yeah. over half of Sona's health if one of those rings true. And he's gonna have to hit, hit those damage timings actually when the clock needs him to, because there is still a time where Rek'Sai and Renekton will have armor items, and no one on Longju apart from Kuz will be really building like that. It will become a battle of front lines, because it's artillery AD carries, it's hyper carries, it's Prey and Reckless on Cogmore and Twitch. So his damage, the Jace's damage in fights, is gonna need to actually be on point. See what happens with this one. Second items have come online for the bot lane marksman. Hurricane on the one side, and Infinity Edge on the other. These squishies can be popped if the right champions get into range. There's not a lot of armor yet on Cuz, and certainly not on Broxa. Even the junglers were a bit more tanky. Meanwhile, Yo, look at this. Yeah, they have a mountain break as well. It's been swept out. Fast. It was spotted, though, by the blue tree usage of Longju. Got to cut away for that. Difficult with the Tremor Sense to actually steal a Baron under the nose of Fnatic. So, of course, try it, and then try to get a rotation as Khan and Soaz. The red buff gets the knockback out of Soaz. There's a blast gun available to him, and he will, in fact, use that. Khan could still be on the but... chase though, and so as, yeah, has to run into the opposing jungle to maybe get a recall off. He looks like he will do so. Red buff coming in key right there. You get a lot of use out of that as a ranged auto attacker in Jace against a melee. So as is able to escape just burning his ultimate though. And you saw Longju check a couple of brushes, see maybe we can find him here. They didn't check all of them. And it was a safe recall in the end. Fnatic take that time to actually get rid of the Ward control that Longju would put down over this barren area. It's actually really respectful from Longju because I thought they might say, okay, whatever, so as we'll try and take mid lane turrets, but they were worried to be about being flanked. They just backed away, took easier objectives like picking up the Raptors and making sure Renekton wasn't around. They realize, they feel like they have strength in their process, Ooh. confidence in what they're doing. Bit of a zoning 
ground wall up there. There might have been a scouting as well. I forget if you get vision off of the, the targeted end area of the ultimate, but they may have just checked the fog of war with that, if nothing else. But mid lane still is going to fall. That's Next the turret in. down. Next to TP in. No stun, though. He might have to cancel. No, he does not cancel. Oh, he's going to time out. It's going to be the crescendo landing. They have the burst damage. Not just yet. The flash four. They're going to knock down Jess. The Sona is gone. And the chase through. Going to be easy on a reckless. The devil kills. The bot lane is dead. And caps might be next on the chopping block. Can they get the attacks in? Almost. The flash can be there to keep him alive, but a two for zero easily longs you to look the next objective. And this is what great teams do. They realize the Renekton's behind us. No one is going to walk up. Let's move forward. We don't have to worry about peeling back. They did not have Khan there. It did not matter. And now they turn on to Baron. And I think that play displayed the difference in the coordination level of these two teams. The Sona ultimate not being followed up on. The teleport when the Cinderella had already missed. Ooh. All those things out of sync as Caps kills Khan on the back end. Get something for himself. Khan was zoning out the jungle. He lost his flash for that play as well. Caps the same, but worth it, of course, as Prox was part of that fight. Also, all right, something on the board. Fnatic got their second kill of the game, but this is now a very tough road ahead as long as you are far, far apart in this. Yeah, 5,000 gold and Baron. If there is a go button, you expect Longju to press it now. Thinking about that last fight. It's as probably, well. actually, it if you think second. about it, it's uh, Lulu W on the Cogmore is probably the go button that we'll see yep. on the 5v5 start. Again, we see the replay. They know Renekton is behind them, but the moment that Prey. Can range the crescendo? That's a fair question. They know Renekton's not going to get the back line if they move forward, and that is the decision, the small micro decision of just go forward. They have no front line, mm -hmm. is what one longs to the fight. That's really unfortunate. This, this is, is Khan getting picked off by Caps as well. Just lands the stun, cobbles him down. Remember the full offensive build that Khan has built to try and get that split push pressure. Yep. He's going for more. He's getting his second lethality. Has the Yomus. Dust Plater, Edge of Knight's going to be next for that one. Basically, what it turns into Ruby Crystal versus another long circle. Tell you which one it's going to be. Khan going to keep pushing the top side soon enough. Mid lane tier two, we just saw fall. Cuz got the last hit credit on that one. So once again, Longju with the turret kill lead, 6,000 gold up. The Baron buff still on most of the members. Everyone except Khan, who died. He sees Soas and then turns away. And we've seen very fast ascents when Longju have got big leads in games. They often finish moments later. This Baron buff for now, it's halfway done. It hasn't led to them cracking the base. So for them actually to be stalled out, to try to multi-step their process of getting the lanes in the right position to make side lane pressure a thing, has slowed down the onslaught. You see, Prey already now close to the inhibitor turret in the mid lane of Fnatic. Yeah, that amount of harassment onto the Syndra, as well as seeing a teleportless Renekton in the bottom lane signals that they can be very aggressive. They also land more poke onto caps. So here we go, let's see how much they can get. Quite a bit right here, Prey just has the shields, and of course, it's not only just the, the help picks, he's got the, the Relic Shield, the Zargon's Ray Shield as well, so he's got a lot of extra HP. No armor on caps, and now significant armor penetration, or lethality stacked onto Khan, so basically gonna be close to true damage on his EQ combos, taking about half his health with the last one. Absolutely. No stun quite landing on a prey, the mid lane's still gonna do siege, he's got about 10% right now, now so is in the fight, but be careful, he's gotta respect this one, getting shot at, Connor really wants his battle, so has running out of health, Hobbs to look for the trade, but here comes Redemption, it's gonna be the kill! Coming through, Khan gets the credit anyway, and it did land in time, so Gorilla gets the assist. So much coordination by Longju there. Redemption is not global, Longju pulled back, catching the minion wave in the process to speed it up with Baron to be in range for that redemption and secure Khan's kill. And you know the comms were, I'm gonna fight him from Khan, and Gorilla saying, I'll throw a redemption. Playing around that particular theater of battle, the redemption area works a treat for Khan, guarantees the kill as they keep the pressure up mid lane. And that's gonna be the turret falling right now. Back to a bonus not required. Spray gets that one picked up. Six to three in turrets now, as long as you're looking to close it out in the near future. Khan getting some long time top lane as well. Yeah, the Baron buff is just wearing off now, but they have cracked the base open and gotten down all the auxiliary turrets on the outside. Mission accomplished so far for Longju, and you're in again a situation with Jesse's flash about to be up. Will they try and go Prey? Oh, good flash. It's away from the crescendo, and a big stun coming to the front line as well. Breakfast a bit in danger. Here comes the knockout, they want that fight. They can't Prey! That's the most important kill. Now in the 5v4, is there more to be had? So as worse back. Not quite the kill for Brox for the flash forward. Ruckus gets another one. This time it works out for him. Instead of being a betrayal, 5v, sorry, 4v3 in this one. Fnatic 4 now has to kite back. Ruckus 
and Co have to wait this out and give away the inhibitor. Ray had the smooth moves in the front line, but did not have the rest of his team there. Notice, however, they may trade down in kills. They do cement the mid lane inhibitor. Certainly wasn't a level of clean we're used to with Longju, but you saw the side flash from Prey and you wondered what could be. Yeah, he flashed away from the Sona ultimate, but staying in means he's still in burst range. And that fight, uh, even though Longju did take the inhibitor, does kind of show the Fnatic has or had opportunity in this game with this team composition. Yeah. They have a large amount of single target burst to potentially take down a Kog'Maw if he wants to be in the front line. And the open here from Fnatic is actually pretty good, seeing Jace over in the side. And this is Juggermore, the Kog'Maw in the front line. Kuz was not front lining there. Very nice flash to the side, but because Khan isn't even in EQ range, Fnatic realized they can go. It was actually a 3v5. BDD was also off on the other side, yep. so Fnatic very willing to opt into that fight. Uh, and it's a two for one once Longju does collapse with their soul. That reset means much. Another item comes through for Reckless. He's got Phantom Dance, so 80% crit Twitch. Again, he's like gonna be the bot lane carry. You saw his damage in the last fight, double anyone else on his squad. He is the one to watch for. And Prey, despite dying early, actually got a decent amount thanks to a Kafkin surprise. Probably about two thirds of that was true damage via the passive, but hey, it is what it is. He's got QSS now on this Kog'Ma, so Prey gonna be even more elusive because his flash is down. Yeah, and we can see Reckless again with these crit items. He has been pretty much the main one doing any of the damage for Fnatic during the group stage. But what's interesting about this is he actually has the lowest damage per minute of AD carries in the group stage because Fnatic collectively has not found very many good fights. It's an amazing contrast to being number one in damage percentage. It means a high percentage of a low number, but it still means that Reckless has been the cornerstone and one of the few things to shine, even if it was this particular pick sure. that, of course, in the late game, one decision really let down his team and the Immortals game. It also often means that the rest of his team is not pitching in very much. Nope. This time, Soaz on a bit more of a damage threat. He's looking to act as backline caps, 2-0-2. He's got a bunch of magic pen as well with the Void Staff done, which is good because Prey has 140 magic resist with his build right now. So it's not easy to get rid of the Kog'Ma on this cinder, but he will certainly try. It's not really easy for Fnatic to deal with the fact that Jace, you know, he's super big. He's going to go into one lane, and they can't send multiple group threats there because they have a super minion wave in mid lane to deal with, and Longju playing around topside because if they get topside yeah. control, they can always fall back to Baron. And to top it all off, it's a double Mountain Drake to threaten the Baron with. So Fnatic, if they want to go, actually needs to go now before Khan gets in turret range because as soon as they start teleporting Saws off the side... They're going to knock up on the break. QSS is there. He's going to cleanse. Not even a hit for a while, but he's got the shoes. He's got to stay alive. No kill to be had. And the front line going to be opened up on the catch of the first kill. He's on a spree for himself. Reckless stops to grab the red buff. His ulti is now down. Pretty but healthy. Buff. Comes across in a two. Looking for Khan. He's going to kite away. Stays up for now. Pray. But the lead Pray. Pray. Hurricane on. He wants them all. He's got one so far. Jess is next up for the block. The flash forward. A double kill so far for Prey. Third one on the meter. Looking for Cap. He's going to be BDD chasing him down. Gets revenge for the laning phase. And Prey can't quite kite it away. But two kills for Soaz. Fight about enough time. Brox is staying alive, but here comes Connie. Wants this one. Does the damage exist? He's got ulti. This could be a kill for Brox. Gets knocked back. Pops the ult. Does he have the damage? No, he doesn't. The ace comes through. Two members alive. With the inhibitor dead, this could be the game closing. How much can they close? That fight was actually so close. Fnatic initiated exactly when they had to, but then Prey waited out all of the CC before unleashing. And you see why teams don't take this approach. The fights with Jace are oh so hard, but one great fight. Vintage Prey frontlining on the Cogmore. In and out, in and out. Will win long shoot the game. It looks like a 32 minute victory. Still going to be a pretty fast one for World 2017 standards. 4 0, the record for Longju, not secure top eight yet, but dangerously close. Yeah, 11 and a half minutes slower than the last time they played Fnatic, but still substantially faster than the group stage average. Longju take the fight and take it home. What did we say as this game was opening up? We said with the win of the Gigabyte Marines, this was not do or die for Fnatic when it comes to victory. But I would say it was do or die for Fnatic in terms of showing character, in terms of persevering through a very difficult game. They did not win, but they did not capitulate either. And that was an important thing for Fnatic fans to see. They are a very proud organization. They did not roll over against Longju. Longju much more coordinated than Fnatic, but Fnatic had the right idea, and I think a pretty good strategy coming into this game, and you'll have to see how that can translate throughout the rest of the day. Longju is gonna be all smiles. They're the ones yeah. in control of this group. They're at four and zero, and with one more win, 
absolutely clinched and have not given any indication that they won't continue to dominate. Yeah, looking very good right now. Longju, the LCK champions. They are my tournament favorite for this one because they had beat SKT 